decentralization will be the norm and it's very good to get up to date now on what decentralized means get into the industry now knowing that you're just preparing yourself for the future so now's the time hey folks Flo here with Blockchain North. This is perhaps our last interview of the day, although I feel like I might be saying this once or twice more. I'm here with Lisa Loud from Fluidify. Why don't you take 30 seconds to just introduce yourself? Sure. I am Lisa Loud. I'm the founder and, co and CEO of Fluidify, and we are doing data and analytics. We have the only verifiable data and analytics for on-chain data in the blockchain space. Okay, that's quite uh, quite a statement. So what sort of data do you mine, if I can use that term uh, sort of in a derived way? Yeah, and it's a really good question. A lot of people say to me, why are you selling blockchain data? Everyone can get that. But what people don't understand is that actually you can get a certain amount of information from a blockchain node, but you have no way of verifying that that is the complete set of information. You have to go to another node and see, do they agree? or another third node sometimes, and do they agree? So we've patented a method of getting to 99% confidence that you have all of the transactions in that block. Wow, using AI? Yes, actually our patent uses AI. Absolutely, you wanna talk a little bit more about that, about the patent and about the technology itself? Sure. Um, we have been around for quite some time, and I wanted to talk about the fact that everyone talks about you know, key analysis, they have great data, yep. however, they don't have verifiable data. They have very, very wide, broad data with a lot of different chains. But in a recent um, legal situation, uh, the CTO of, of our chain analysis was asked, do you have verifiable data? And he said, oh yeah, we take it from third-party APIs. He said, do you know where they get their data? He was like, no, I don't. He could not verify that. And so that case was thrown out of court and then a whole bunch of cases that happened previously that had used chain analysis data, they were also reopened because their data wouldn't be absolutely, I mean, it's probably right, yeah. but it wasn't verified. So there's a difference between accuracy and verifiable accuracy. So could you explain the nuance between verified and unverified uh, content or, or data? I feel like we live in a world of abundant content. The vast majority of it, I'm sure, is not verified, whether it's on-chain or off-chain. Can you maybe take an example of a situation where specifically it is particularly important for the data to be verified? Okay, yes. Very easy example, audits. So I'm sure you've been through an audit or you know someone who's been through an audit. It, well, we work with Ernst & Young, actually, to do okay. audits with clients who have blockchain assets because they need three sources of information. The plus source is what a client gives them. Mm -hmm. That's the first is. They can't just take that on faith. Right. They need to verify it. So we provide the second source with our database of information, our historical information of blockchain transactions. And then we provide the third source because we give them a link to Etherscan or the Block Explorer, mm -hmm. where they can go with the third party verification. Now they have their three sources of information. Now it's an audit. Okay. That's a good example. Yeah. Now, do you have any announcements to make? Is there anything that you could use this platform for to uh, to, to share with, you know, Canadians and, and others? Yeah, actually, especially for Canadians, we just signed a contract with the RCMP and we are doing uh, an application for them for their field agents. Okay. When they go out in the field, there are times when something happens, there was a transaction, but there's no money. There's no money in the car. There's, they don't find any money. How do they tell what happened, what transactions happened if they were on chain. Mm -hmm. So they need an application built for them that will help them to track transactions that happen in the field that have no physical evidence. Ooh. I um, can guess of a few ideas of, you know, the money in the car, what kind of situations we're talking about, but maybe we won't go there now. Exciting stuff, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, exciting. Um, You've been analyzing a lot of data uh, and you have access to a lot of verified data. What does that data tell you about the state of crypto, some of the trends that you're maybe observing as a result of, you know, looking at all this data? Yeah, that's a really good question. We're not really a trend. We're, so, you know, chain analysis yeah. and then some of these Nasari and other ones are, are looking Realistic, at the trends yeah. and ARC of intelligence. 
we're more at the granular level, okay. so I can tell you insights, but they're more like very geeky insights. So well, when I'm sure I, one. I trace transactions through, yeah. like sometimes there are, things, there are a lot of things that happen. There are a lot of scams and hacks that happen. How do they happen? No one really knows, but if you actually use our data, you can find out, okay, this person injected a million dollars of liquidity into a pool that skewed the price because the smart contract accepted a one-side transaction, skewed the price. Then they did a lot of trading and they extracted their million dollars. They took out all, they might've taken out $200,000 out of that liquidity pool yeah. just by manipulating the prices on the two sides of it. So it's really interesting to tra trace those through and realize, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm vulnerable to this kind of attack, that kind of attack. There's all these things that people can do and you're like, how did that happen? Well, you start to learn how they happen. And once you know that, now you can build ways into your algorithms and your strategies to avert those climate. Mm -hmm. Very interesting indeed. Thank you for sharing that example. And uh, perhaps as we wrap up, I want to ask you for some uh, of your lessons learned because a lot of our audience may be like new to crypto or relatively early in their journey as entrepreneurs or professionals or, or just crypto curious uh, yeah. folks. Uh, what, are, what are some of the lessons that you have learned across your journey about, about crypto, about making a career or even having a business in crypto? You know, I was, I was on stage a little while ago and they asked me, what will, what will it look like in five years? Oh. In five years, we will not be having the Blockchain Futurist Conference. We'll be having the, te the AI Futurist Conference or the Technology Futurist Conference because blockchain is just a means to an end. So... If you want to get into blockchain, if you want to get into crypto, just remember, it's just a means to an end. Decentralization as a concept will become so ubiquitous, so common that we won't even see it as a thing. It'll just be, I, I mean, you don't talk about HTML. You know, I looked at HTML and I found this site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or even the term online today is like, of course, when you say, oh, I, I was looking something up online, it almost seems futile to say online. Online, exactly. Yeah. So I was looking at a ledger, it'll be an online, it'll be a decentralized ledger, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that the way we're going is decentralization will be the norm. And it, it's very good to get up to date now on what decentralized means, get into the industry now, knowing that you're just preparing yourself for the future. It's not that complicated. <laughs> yeah. And it will get less and less complicated. So now's the time. Thank you for those predictions and perfect way to wrap this interview. Thank you very much, Lisa. Pleasure speaking with you. Yes, you too.